Hello everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario. Your goal is to develop a treatment plan based primarily on pharmacological intervention. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough and then I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card and good luck. Three, two, one. Although the scenario depicted in this card is exceedingly rare, I've actually seen this happen twice to patients where their home oxygen flashed over while they were smoking a cigarette. Obviously this patient is suffering from a critical burn, so let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario in a little greater detail. You're dispatched to a private residence for a 59 year old female with facial burns she sustained from smoking while using her home oxygen. She is alert, but only able to speak in short two to three word sentences. You hear Strider and her voice is hoarse when she speaks. You examine her mouth and notice swelling in the posterior oral cavity. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 168 over 102, heart rate 126, respiratory rate 36, and SpO2 of 87% on room air. Now, the vast majority of my treatment here isn't actually going to involve caring for the burns at all. My primary concern for this patient is aggressive and early airway management. If I wait too long to control the airway, I risk losing it completely and then needing to perform a cricothyrotomy, which in and of itself is a dangerous procedure. The following treatment I'll give you is something that you'll see commonly in pre-hospital agencies that allow their providers to RSI. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'll begin treatment just like I do with all my other static cards by reciting the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV, O2, monitor. The next thing I should do is pre-oxygenate this patient. If you remember, her baseline O2 sat on room air was 87%. Due to the phenomenon of oxygen disassociation, the lower that SpO2 gets, the quicker it drops. So I want to pre-oxygenate this patient the best I can before I attempt to RSI. For those of you who don't know, RSI stands for Rapid Sequence Induction or Rapid Sequence Intubation. Both terms are correct and interchangeable. The first step in RSI, besides preoxygenation, is to provide sedation to the patient. The sedatives that I would commonly choose would be things like Atomidate, Midazolam, or Ketamine. Atomidate is dosed at 0.3 mg per kg, and this is given IV push. Midazolam is 2 to 4 milligrams IV push, and ketamine has a wide range of applicable doses depending on what you're using it for, and you can dose anywhere from 0.3 mg all the way up to 4 milligrams per kilogram. The benefit to providing higher dose ketamine is it will actually improve pulmonary compliance, and this can be beneficial when you're intubating somebody with COPD or asthma. After my sedative has had time to work, I'll then administer a paralytic. Common paralytics are things like succinylcholine, rocuronium, and vacuronium. Succinylcholine, which has the shortest duration of action, is dosed at 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram. Rocuronium, which has a longer duration of action, is dosed at 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram as well. The third medication up here, which is my personal favorite, is vacuronium. Vacuronium is dosed at 0.1 mg per kg. This has a longer duration of action and a longer onset of action than rocuronium and succinylcholine. It does provide an extra added layer of safety though, 
because vecuronium has to be reconstituted. It comes as a powder and you actually have to mix it with sterile water. Be aware though that when you choose a paralytic that's long lasting such as vecuronium, if you miss the tube, your patient will remain paralyzed for the duration of that medication. Succinylcholine has a fairly short duration of action, usually lasting less than 10 minutes. So this is primarily what is kept pre-hospitally but there are some downsides to its use, which we won't cover today. Next thing we'll administer is another dose of a repeat sedative. And uh, after you've controlled the airway here, you can go very high dose if you feel like that's indicated. And then providing analgesia to somebody who's been intubated actually will go a long way in helping you control their airway better. You get a little bit better ventilatory compliance when they're not feeling quite as much discomfort. And then finally, rapid transport. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more static pharmacology and static cardiology. Until I see you next, keep washing your hands, have a good rest of your night.